This is Guangzhou. And so is this, 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 and this. Oh, and this. Anyway, the point is I finally made it to the city of goats, flowers, and musicians. And as Jack has been here before, he's going to show me around. This snail's a whopper. Buckle your seatbelts, guys, because yeah. he ain't your typical tour guide. This year. <laughs> this place is the real deal. Oh. Hello. We could be in Italy right now. Right then, wifey, after six and a half years in the Middle Kingdom, you finally made it to the fine city of Guangzhou. I know, I am so excited to be here. I've heard so many good things from you and from the viewers. And the number one thing that keeps popping up is, of course, the food. Oh my word, you are in for a treat. And so I reckon we should start off with that most iconic of breakfasts, chang fer. Yes! This place is the real deal as well. None of that pre-made malarkey. No, this stuff is fresh, straight from the source. You know someone is legit when they're serving coke out of a glass bottle as well. They take taste seriously here. This place is pretty uh, good value. This chung fan looks like the real deal and you have been banging on about it since you came to Guangzhou. So it's got a lot to live up to, but my man is a making chung fan machine. Yeah, it's quite the system. Oh, mm. that was really good. Really fresh and the green onions are still a little bit raw, so they really come through in the flavor. The mm. sauce good as well. The sauce is like quite a rich, like deep soy, not just like a normal soy. I think they must like add some extra bits to it because it tastes like a little bit sweet. Oh my gosh, you're just you devouring it. It's something that you've got to try for yourself because it is a life changer, I tell thee. I tell thee. <laughs> oh my God, that was so good. So, so peng. Anyway, last time I was down here in Guangzhou, I didn't plan the itinerary myself. That was all down to you and our amazing audience who gave me a load of points on a map to go to. But I decided my... She was... But I decided how I was going to get from point to point. And one of my favorite methods of transport in any new city is a bike. Maybe. Bit of a hectic cycle ride, and I guess that's the thing with Guangzhou. It is one of like China's manufacturing capitals, yeah. one of the most important ports. It's got so many factories, and it really feels like it's a commerce capital. But Guangzhou also has another nickname, which you actually told me, Nico. Do you remember what that is? <laughs> it's called the City of Goats. Oh, I, th I know. I meant the other one. Oh, I don't know what's that then. The City of Flowers. Oh. The city of goats and flowers. So because of its subtropical climate, that means that the flowers can bloom all year round, meaning that there are lots of lovely green spaces that we can come to enjoy and get away from the bustling city because it is hectic, I tell you. Yeah, I've definitely felt that when we've been walking around. There are lots of green spaces and lots of tree-lined avenues, which I just love in cities. And the local authorities have come up with a novel way to keep the green spaces peaceful. There's been a lot of concern that IEs are making too much noise with their loud, absolutely banging tunes. So they've introduced these to try to encourage people to keep the noise down in parks. But to be honest, just over here, there's some construction noise. I actually don't mind the IEs music. I think it's quite fun. I'd much rather that than the sound of construction. Hello! Asbo, Asbo. <laughs> making too much noise. <laughs> Besides the usual sight of eyes doing eye things, this park is home to all kinds of curious wonders from the natural world. Blimey now, mate. This snail's a whopper. Look at the size of him. Kind of smells a bit as well. Whoa, look at this tree. Look at the tree trunks. It looks like it's come straight out of like a fairy tale. 
this park could not feel more quintessentially Chinese, but just a stone's throw across a short passage of water lies a whole different kind of world. Have I got you intrigued? You always have me intrigued, Jack, because your whimsical sentences go on for such a long time. This year... <laughs> Not very big though, so... So besides getting shit on your nose... On my nose? Yeah, it's just a little bit bird poo. On my nose? No, I'm kidding. So besides getting pooed on on your arm, what's your first impressions of <laughs> Shamian Island? Man, these trees are absolutely sick. I feel like I'm in an enchanted forest or something. The trees have got like these branches that come down. And from afar, I thought they were fake. I thought someone had built them to like hold the big tree arms up, but apparently not. Like the tree has grown these itself down to the ground to make it more stable. Isn't that just amazing? Nature, you, you never cease to amaze me. But Jack wasn't feeling quite as enthused. I think my man's looking a little bit tired there. We need to grab him a coffee because it's lunchtime and we haven't had a coffee yet and you know what get Jack gets like, he gets cranky, so let's go grab one. Yeah, that probably explains why I've not been on my best form as of yet. I mean, look, we've come to one of the most historical areas in the city and I've not even spouted any historical facts yet. Shows that man really needs a coffee. <laughs> Dios mio, this is a real vibe in here, isn't it? They have the chocolate cake, or raspberry cheesecake. Do you want a piece or not? I will have a piece of cake for the video. Yeah. <laughs> and your waitress. There you go. Oh, we're looking out onto this beautiful European architecture. We could be in Italy right now, not in China. Well, the coffee is banging, so that's a good sign. Although, I would say minus marks for serving hot coffee in a glass. <laughs> it's just wrong, wrong, wrong. Wow, point taken. I wonder what his verdict on the cake will be. Oh my God, that's actually so good. <laughs> wow, I feel like a new man now. So wifey, we've had the coffee, we've had the cake. Now there's only one thing left to do to energize ourselves. What's that? Let's get exercising in the park. Seems to have had a perfect effect on these two gentlemen. <laughs> We are trying to save some money by staying in hostels, but the bed is so hard in our room that my back is aching. Oh yeah, this is good. This is exactly what I need. Mm. Oh, that's the spot. God, I'm weak. Need to get back in the gym, fam. What happened, Jack? Why are you so weak? About a week ago, I banged my head pretty bad and gave myself a bad concussion. I reckon it's more or less healed, right? Yeah, it's looking, it's looking better. So I've pretty much been lying in bed the last week. It's the first physical exercise I've done. Still feeling a little bit shaky, a little bit weak, I won't lie. Well, if you're looking to find the secret to eternal good health, Jack, you've come to the right place. Yeah. The uncles here are such a vibe. I feel like they've got really good fashion sense and they all wear like really sick outfits. Oh man, she was absolutely rocking the 80s pop, which is my jam. Yeah, I think it was some Canto rock. I just shazammed it. Apparently it's Anita Moy. Moy? Moy? Whatever bangers. it was. Banger. Absolute banger. So parks in China are always an absolute vibe, aren't they? But what I've noticed is down here in Guangdong province, there's always a distinctly musical flavor. Wherever you go in China, people seem to be obsessed with Cantonese rock and Cantonese pop tunes. So perhaps this is also the musical capital of China. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. These old boys behind me seem to be rocking a pair of Les Pauls, which makes me think we might be in for one hell of a jam sesh. Look guys, I know it ain't fashionable, I know it ain't cool, and I know you're probably gonna try and cancel me for saying this, but even though we live in the age of sequences and synthesizers, you still, for me, just can't beat a couple of old dudes laying down some licks on a guitar. Oh, so pain. Oh, that's just because you're a failed musician. I mean, you might look like you're in a band, but you're not anymore, are you? Now that's true. In my younger days, I did used to dabble, but sadly didn't go anywhere. And like uh, many failed musicians, I picked up a camera because I guess it's a bit easier to make art with a camera than it is uh, with a guitar. 
Hey, speak for yourself. Anyway, that's enough self-indulgent nonsense from us. There's still a lot more of this island to explore. So we got our wedding photos taken outside the Temple of Heaven. But Chinese people want to get their wedding photos taken outside of judges. Oh, and if you're wondering why this island has quite so many European-style buildings, then you should check out the other Guangzhou videos we've done, in which Jack went into a frankly exhausting level of detail. I'm going to rename this island Influencer Island because everyone is here taking photos, taking videos, appreciating the architecture around them. So if you're an influencer here in Guangzhou, come to this island, you'll love it. But we need to get going because we have a lot more to pack in today. So even though this is the city of flowers and there's a beautiful smell of fresh blooms in the air, that's not the only smell you'll come across, is it, Nico? No, this is a very pungent smell that I'm sure you would all recognize, and that is of Chinese medicine. Yeah, this is a traditional Chinese medicine market, the Qingping market. It's fascinating, but everyone sells the same thing. So guys, how do you decide where to go to buy what you need? I have no idea what any of it is and what any of it's used for. I suppose we could always ask someone. So it's fish, fish stomach. Fish, fish stomach. stomach. And what does that help with? Stomach ache. Uh -huh. Fish stomach helps to stomach ache. Yes. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. And you make a tea with this? Yeah, it can clean your throat. Whoa, what on earth? I'm so intrigued. Guys, do you know? What does it do? Leave me a comment and tell me. The medicine market spills out onto the streets of the surrounding neighborhood. This is the southern part of Liwan district, which is one of the OG urban centers of Guangzhou. It's home to bustling streets, tight alleyways, and a diverse range of architectural styles. What does that building remind you of? That building reminds me a little bit of the buildings in Hanoi. So yeah, in northern Vietnam, they actually charge the tax for each property by the floor area. People build really tall but really narrow houses with a small footprint in order to pay less tax, basically, on the house. I wonder if something similar was going on here in Guangdong, which, of course, is only a couple of hundred kilometers away from Vietnam. What? That is like a curved building. It's just like chopped in half, basically. So we just stepped off the main roads to come down these different alleys. And honestly, it feels like a different world here in Guangzhou. We love a little detour. And some of you may know that we love a detour so much that we started a new channel called Destination Detour. So guys, if you like detours like us, check that out. It's more travel around the world. So the more eagle-eyed amongst you may notice that I'm actually sporting a Destination Detour t-shirt today. Some uh, tasty merch there. Shameless plug, shameless, shameless plug. plug. Shameless plug, shameless plug. Seriously, go check it out, fam. Anyway, back to the video. Alleyways are so cute. They kind of remind me of like a Southern style Beijing hutongs because they've got like the small alley vibes but they definitely feel southern compared to the northern hutongs. Does that make sense? Whoa, look at this one. Man, that is so sick. Beautiful house. And for Jack, this area is bringing back memories of old Shanghai. So of course the history and the style do differ slightly, but these neighborhoods do have a very similar feeling to some of the older neighborhoods in Shanghai. The good thing is though, here they do seem to be preserving them. There's a lot of plaques marking out the listed buildings. Yeah, so they've got like loads of these plaques to say that they're the traditional style building here. Whereas in Shanghai, pretty much all of the old buildings and all of the old neighborhoods like Laoshi Mare, somewhere I was lucky enough to explore floor last year are slowly disappearing one by one. After spending far too long getting lost in the alleys, we eventually made it back to the main street, which was no less architecturally impressive. Whoa, look at the like mural, is it painted? It looks kind of 3D, that's amazing. Okay, so things started to get a bit hectic on that main street, but no worries because Guangzhou is, after all, one of the most important cities here in the Pearl River Delta, which means it has an amazing network of canals to link all of the rivers, which perfect for commerce through history, but they're also an ideal place to bring your wifey to exercise us away from the uh, stress of the main streets. Happy to exercise the legs, not the wallet. 
Just lay wide, soaking up the sights. <laughs> so we keep spotting this guy and his little white dog. This dog needs its own Instagram account because it is hella cute. I need to use the bathroom, but um, the one that we just went to was really ramo. And I thought this might be quieter, and I think I might be wrong. I think it might be more busy. So look at the streets. Honestly, there's basically nothing I miss about the pandemic, except for how much quieter everywhere was, because now China is just so busy once again, once you come to these more touristic spots. Found a toilet then? Oh, eventually. Well, I think I may have pissed in Bruce Lee's former residence. That was a nice little area. It was really busy because today is a Sunday. It's a little bit touristy and I think we need to go and find ourselves some good food. Well, that shouldn't be too hard because apparently Guangzhou is actually the food capital of the Cantonese regions. And actually, fun fact for you, it's got more restaurants than any city in China. Fact fam. Whoa, mind blown. All right, well, these streets seem a little bit more like it, a little bit less touristy. I'm sure we'll be able to find something, even if it's a cheeky street food cart. Did you just say street food? That's my kind of food, fam. Let the street food adventure commence. Oh man, it's such a vibe. The lights are coming on, people are hustling and bustling. Yeah, I love it. Love it. There was quite a few restaurants and we got decision fatigue, so we couldn't decide where to go. And so we kept walking and now I feel like we've walked into almost the market district. Everyone's stood around picking out the fresh ingredients for their dinner or maybe even picking up a bit of pre-cooked goose or something similar. And I can't see any restaurants. I can just see like ingredients to make food and I'm certainly not making my dinner here. So I really think we need to just pick something because I am absolutely starving, mate. Shall we go? Yeah, let's, let's just go. I am so hungry right now. Big ass eggplant. Yeah, man. Oh, some of these. It's good, aren't they? Yeah, you like yeah, these, Yeah, right? boy, I do like them. Full? <laughs> I like these mushrooms. These mushrooms as well, too. Oh, yes. Peppers. Yeah, give me one. Get a couple of lotus root. Should we yeah. get some like tofu skin or something? Do you think we've got enough? Yeah, I think we might have got too much to be honest. <laughs> Yo. When you travel, there's always such a pressure that you put upon yourself to always make sure every meal is a banger, especially if you come to like a foodie city like Guangzhou. But the fact is, when you're walking around, especially if you're trying to make content as well, sometimes you just like gotta just eat what you can. And you know what? Wherever you go in China, I would always say Shao Kao and Lanzhou Lamian. They're two safe bets that you'll find in pretty much any city, wherever you go. And they're always great fallback options for us at least. Malatang as well. The reason that we like Chao Kao and Malatang so much is because you have like a buffet like this, so you don't have to look at the menu, you don't have to translate it. You can literally just go in, pick as much veg or meat or whatever you want, and then they cook it for you, either in a broth or like this on the barbecue. It's just perfect. And you've got to bear in mind that not everyone in Guangzhou is from Guangzhou. You know what, you're gonna find food from all over the country because so many people are attracted to here because of the work opportunities. The reason we are chatting so much waffle is because this barbecue is taking forever. This is the longest I've ever waited not just for barbecue, but for any food here in China. I just can't stop looking at my hand and thinking how tasty it looks. Maybe I just... I saw them fulfilling a load of Meituan orders, so maybe next time if we uh, came here, we're just better off ordering Waimai to their very location. It'd probably be faster, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, all that way, this really does not look, look that appetizing. Where's the rest, fam? I'm so hungry. But most importantly, how does it taste? Where is hot? I mean, it is good. How oh, is yeah. Yeah, finally. Mm, it's absolutely pangolin, though, so I'll forgive them. I'll forgive them. All's well that ends well. Oh, Jack, you have absolutely smashed today. This has been such a fun day exploring this 
vibey old town of Guangzhou. But I think in the next video, we should go to the more modern side. What do you reckon? Yeah, well, there's a lot of modern places to choose from, so it's going to be a banger. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.